when you study physics, it can be really, really hard. So I took physics one, physics two, and physics three. So I'm not, I'm not a physics expert. I've, I've only taken three classes, but in my experience, physics three, AKA modern physics was the most interesting one. In fact, it was the only one I got an A in. I got B's in the other ones and I studied like crazy, like crazy. I ended up studying mathematics and uh, I just have so much respect for physics majors. So in this video, I wanna show you one of my physics books. This is a book that you can use to learn modern physics. It's called Modern Physics. And it's written by Tipler and I think it's Llewellyn. Anyways, we're gonna take a look at this book and at the very, very end of the video, I'm gonna show you some very, very easy math books uh, that you can use for beginners. But let's start by just taking a quick look at some modern physics. So this is modern physics. This is the one by Tipler and I, I don't know how to say his name. I think it's Llewellyn. And I think this is a great book. And again, I've only, I've only taken three courses on physics, but I do collect a lot of books and I have way more physics books that I actually have looked at and I actually have read portions of them. I think reading is one of the best things you can do for your mind, all subjects, not just math, physics. It's good to learn about everything, history, it's all worth it, my friends. So let's take a quick look at this book and see what's inside. And this was my favorite class. This was my favorite physics class. I thought it was the most interesting because you talk about time dilation. I, th I thought that was really cool. Then you have the exercise where like someone goes up in a rocket and you know they travel around at a really fast speed and they come back and like there's a time difference. I thought that was really fascinating. And you learn that fairly early on in the course. So it keeps you engaged. So it starts with relativity. So this is not something you typically see in a regular physics book. Relativity 2, let's come over here and take a look. Quantization of charge, light, and energy. Some more topics here, the nuclear atom, the wave-like properties of particles. And again, surprisingly, despite my struggles with physics, uh, I did better in, in this course. So if you're having a hard time with physics, keep that in mind. Uh, you might do better when it gets harder. This is supposed to be harder, right? The Schrodinger equation, atomic physics, statistical physics, molecular structure and spectra, solid state physics, nuclear physics. I actually have a, a large collection of books that used to belong to a famous nuclear physicist, nuclear reactions and applications, particle physics, and then astrophysics and cosmology, and then some other stuff here. And let's just go straight to the beginning so you see how it reads. And I'm sorry, I just have to smell it because it's drawing me closer and closer. Ah, oh, smells, smells nice. So you see, it's just a book. You know, you read it like any other physics book and it's got, you know, formulas and examples. So I wouldn't say that like, you know, it's extra special in any way. It's just a standard physics book. And it might be, I think I have one other modern physics book, but I don't, I, again, I don't have that many on this subject. The Michelson-Mori experiment. There's a mirror and a light source, there's an observer. Yeah, this, this is so cool. Let's look at the exercises. Uh, you know, I, I did a lot of the exercises from this book um, as homework problems back in the day. Einstein's postulates. You know, people always talk about Albert Einstein and what he did. You can actually learn about that in this book, which is kind of cool. So let's keep going here. The Lorentz transformation. Time dilation and length contraction. This is cool. These formulas are kind of freaky. Yeah. Length contraction. Let's, let's look at this. Let's take a look at this. See what this says. A phenomenon closely related to time dilation is length contraction. The length of an object measured in the reference frame in which the object is at rest is called its proper length L sub P. In a reference frame in which the object is moving, the measured length parallel to the direction of motion is shorter than its proper length. Cool. That's, that's, yeah. It's shorter than its proper length. That, that's, it, it, it's just really, it's really nuts. The Doppler effect. Let's come over here. There's good pictures too. They try to explain things. Now, obviously it helps if you have a classroom and a teacher. You know, this stuff is hard to learn on your own. You know, there's a reason people go to college and get physics degrees and, and they get math degrees. It's because it's hard. But self-study is one of the best things you can do for yourself and your mind. It's always good to keep learning and reading. Reading is where it's at. Reading is where it's at. Here's some exercises. So quite a few exercises. They're broken up by subsection, which is kind of nice. Very, very nice. Chapter seven is on atomic physics. Here's the Schrodinger equation in three dimensions. You've got some partial derivatives there. So that would require 
some calculus three. I don't recall what the prereqs are for this subject. I just know that you have to have, you know, I had to study physics one and physics two before uh, taking physics three. And I'm pretty sure you probably have to take calc three, which is where you see partial derivatives and stuff. Um, I had all three calculus courses, obviously, before jumping into this class. Yeah, so a lot of different topics that you don't see. Some cool pictures. So don't be off-put by physics if you have a hard time when you first encounter it. A lot of times it's the book, it's the teacher, it's the presentation, you're not ready. Or maybe it's the subject, it's just the concepts that you're studying. So um, you can always learn. Don't let, don't let one bad experience with physics put you off from, from learning. This book doesn't have a lot of color to it. You notice it's just all the same colors, but that's okay, right? You don't need colors to learn. You can learn from black and white books or black, white, and blue in this case. Solid book. It's well bound. It's well made. It's thick. It's solid. It's heavy. It's like a heavy book. I've had this book for years, 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 years. So yeah, I think it's pretty cool. If I can find this book, I'll leave a link. I promised I would show you some really easy math books, but I'll, and I'll make it quick. So I've got a ton of books. Use my links in the description. I've got courses. Check them out on my website, mathsorcerer.com or freemathvids.com. Tons of math courses. Uh, check those out. But I've got books. This one covers limits, derivatives, and integrals. These are workbooks. These are super easy. So you can learn calculus with this. I'll just mention these really quickly. Why not? This is an entire book on limits, which is pretty good. It's all for limits. So Calc 1 mainly. My best book so far. Well, my most popular book so far. Uh, Real Superpowers That Will Change Your Life. This is a book that will teach you to take action. This will help you to sit down and actually do physics, actually do math. It's a great book. It's, it's a book to get you to act because action is the only thing in this world, my friends, that will bring results. I have a book here on derivatives. This one's pretty good. It's thick. This will make you a differentiation master. It does cover partial derivatives, which you need for modern physics. Let me just double, I'm pretty sure it does. Let me just double check. You know, I'm pretty, yeah, it does. It does cover partial derivatives. Uh, this, is, this one has integral calculus and a little bit of differential equations. So this is a pretty good book as well. These are all little workbooks. They're all inexpensive. Two super easy college algebra books. These are very, very easy. These are all for beginners, by the way. We're going to save this one for last. And then a pre-calc book, which covers matrices, some division, some stuff with exponentials and logs. All my books have full solutions to every single example and exercise. So they're really good if you just want to sit down and do some math. That's what they're for, right? They're not meant to replace regular textbooks, you know, like the ones by Stewart or Larson. They're just meant to get you to do math. And as Paul Hamels used to say, the best way to learn mathematics is to do mathematics. And that was the philosophy behind these books and, and taking action. This one is special though. This one will teach you how to execute at an unstoppable pace. It has tons of stuff. Let me just show you the contents. This is an awesome book. It'll help you study. It'll teach you mental clarity and focus, discipline and self-control, how to manage your time, how to be productive, how to get in shape and stay alive longer, how to become a high performer, how to manage your money, how to think independently and block out the noise, right? We live in a crazy world. How to have social skills and influence people. The truth about being successful, how to make better decisions, how to control your emotions and be stronger as a person, the power of actually learning and adapting. It's very important. The hidden rules of life, building the life you actually want, and the fact is your life is in your hands. This book is way more powerful, okay, than, than my most popular book. Um, I think it's, it's deeper. It's kind of like a follow-up to this one. This is the book that started it all, though. This book inspires action. This continues on that action, and it has more details. And these math books are a way to execute and apply your action-based mindset to actual mathematics. And you can apply this to anything, my friends. Anyways, I just wanted to show you these books. They're awesome. Check them out if you want. Links are on the description. They're all on Amazon. This is a good book on physics. I recommend it. It's the one I use. It's pretty good. It's just a solid book. If you have other recommendations, by the way, for books on physics, leave a comment. What do you think about modern physics? What's your experience? Is it good? Is it bad? I want to know. Uh, and when you leave comments, uh, it helps other people because there's people from all over the world watch these videos, my friends. Modern physics, it was my favorite experience with physics. I love it. Take care. Stay strong.